If you're planning to go on an adventure and don't know what gear you should bring along, especially if you're planning to be self-sufficient, then keep on watching. Hey guys, my name is Rosanna and welcome back to another video where I talk all things travel and living an alternative life on the road. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you all about my travel gear, how I manage to be self-sufficient in the nature and all the things that I find essential in my backpacking life. In order to keep this video clear and organized, I'm gonna break it down into three categories. My house, my kitchen, and my electronics. So let's start with the house. The most important thing is definitely your backpack because it's the one thing that's gonna carry your whole life. So you must choose wisely. I traveled for many years with an old spray aerial 55 liters and the quality is incredible. And trust me, I've been treating it pretty bad, but this backpack is still alive and has a lifetime warranty. I like it because you can open it from the top, the bottom, and the middle. But in my opinion, if you have the option, choose a bag that you can open entirely like a suitcase. It will make your life much easier. 55 liters is a pretty good capacity and I'm able to pack for four seasons and even manage to put my tent and my sleeping bag in it. Recently, I switched to this one here because I wanted to try traveling with an hybrid bag, meaning it's a backpack that also turns into a suitcase thanks to its wheels. The reason why I've decided to switch this kind of bag is because I've upgraded all my video gear, my computer, my drone, lenses, camera, and now it's way heavier than what it used to be. And you know what? I really love it. I lived in the jungle for two weeks in Costa Rica and the only way to get to that place was through the forest and the beach. And you know what? This backpack did the job. Although it's not as comfortable as the one I had before, I'm seriously impressed at how comfy this bag is. I've had this tent for over two years now and it's called the MSR UBA. The reason why I chose this tent is because of the good reviews I read from people who travel to Patagonia with it. The strong winds and the cold made me think twice about the quality of the tent I was gonna use. So it's 4 a.m. and there's so much wind that it's impossible to sleep. I bought a cheap tent when I was road tripping in Canada in 2015 and almost ended up down a cliff because of the strong winds the tent couldn't handle. Although camping on a cliff wasn't the cleverest idea either. It's handled winds that were about 100 kilometers per hour, temperatures reaching minus 10 degrees Celsius, and above all, it only weights one kilo. Light, high quality, and three seasons are the reason why I chose this tent. And even if it says three seasons, I've seen people camping with it in the snow and be okay. The third item I wanna talk about is my sleeping bag. Before leaving France, I went to all the shops I knew, desperately trying to find the right sleeping bag, but everything was so pricey and was over like 400 euros, and also were massive. So I took the risk to wait until we'd be in Patagonia to buy it, and there I found a little gem from North Face. Probably one of my favorite outdoor brands, and the quality is amazing. It's suitable for women, weights only 1.5 kilos, and is so foldable that it can fit into my backpack. Comfort temperature is about minus seven degrees Celsius. Limit is about minus 15 degrees Celsius. And extreme is minus 35 degrees Celsius. The only cons is that it's only useful in winter. So since I'm continuing my journey across the American continent and I'm currently traveling in warm countries, I've decided to leave the sleeping bag in France and got landed a new one that is more suitable for these kind of temperatures. The day I reach a cold country again, I will simply buy a thermal sleeping bag liner or use a survival blanket. My friend Fede, with whom I traveled for two months, used a thermal liner while we were crossing Patagonia in winter. Although I really don't recommend doing that if you know you're gonna be facing very cold temperatures. Another item you should not leave home without is a mattress, otherwise it will ruin your back. So I had one from Thermarest. I chose it because it only weighed 200 grams, but after a couple of months, I pinched it somewhere and it was impossible for me to find where it was. So despite that it had everything that somebody would look for in a mattress, I would never ever pay that price again for a mattress. So I went to Decathlon and bought this one here. It cost me 40 euros and does the job pretty well. I am very impressed with the quality and at how compact and light it is. Another item I used to have, not essential, but still very useful, is a silk bag. I really liked putting it inside my sleeping bag because it's more hygienic and it will make your life easier because you won't have to wash your sleeping bag all the time. But it's also very practical and hostels whether or not you doubt the fact that the bed sheets have been cleaned. And if you're couch surfing a lot, it will avoid your host to have to clean and change the bed sheets all the time. Especially if that person receives a lot of couch surfers. The next item everyone should have is a smaller backpack. 
A bag you can take for a hiking day like this one. I've had tons of different ones in the past, but I've just upgraded to this one here because I needed one that could carry my whole gear. This one fits my drone, my camera, my two lenses, and a 15 inches laptop. I also recommend having a small foldable backpack like this one here from Osprey, which I've used a lot for days uh, where I just simply went visiting a city or even grocery shopping. It doesn't take any space and it's very useful to have. You get it, just days you don't want to be carrying a huge backpack. Now onto item number eight. Floor mats can be very expensive and heavy. That's why I've decided to replace the floor mat that goes underneath my tent with a reusable survival blanket. I've had this one for over two years and it's still alive and above all, it only cost me four euros. Now, this is obviously not an essential item, but if you're the kind of person that likes to do yoga or exercise and found that your mat is too heavy, you can do like me and cut it in half. Now it only weights about 500 grams instead of one kilo and still allows me to exercise on it. Anyway, now that I've described my house, welcome to my kitchen. The first item everyone should have if you're planning to spend a lot of time in the nature is a camping stove. It's very lightweight, mine weighs about 70 grams, it's compact and the flame is adjustable. I use this with a camping stove gas. The stove cost me about 35 euros and the gas generally cost me about 4 euros when I was in Chile. There are many options available, but this is the one I chose. Of course, if you have a camping stove, you will need at least one pan. I've managed to do great meals with only one and it's from Sea to Summit. It cost me about 45 euros and weights only 250 grams. But a thing that I like the most is that it's retractable. I also have a retractable glass, which I bought in a store called Ovio Camper in Paris. It cost me about 11 euros and like the pan is also made from silicone. However, if you think you're all set, don't leave the house without your cutlery set. I have this bamboo set bought from a French brand called Capybara, which I really love. I'm seriously impressed with the quality. In case you didn't have the option or the time to buy them, you can also reuse the plastic one they give you when you eat out. That's what I used to do. I also have a Tupperware, which I use a lot as a bowl to eat my breakfast, to keep my food fresh when I didn't finish it, and also when I buy things in bulk when I go grocery shopping. That way, it will also limit your plastic consumption. Also, don't forget that a knife will always be useful. Whether it's for canning your veggies, potatoes or rope, always have one in your backpack. But don't forget to put it in your check bag if you take the plane because otherwise they will not let you go through security with it. When I'm camping, I also cook a lot with this wooden spoon I found while camping in Argentina. I like it because it doesn't damage my pan, but I also find myself cooking a lot with this bamboo spoon, which is quite thick. One item that I use a lot while camping, but that I really see people with, is a bucket. As you can tell, it's very small, light and compact. And it's very useful if you're camping next to a lake or a river, as you can fill this 10 liters bucket and avoid contaminating the water by washing your utensils in it. This one is from a brand called Terra Hiker. It only cost me 9 euros and I've had it for more than 2 years. I've only had to use this a couple of times, but found it extremely useful the day my lighter ran out of gas. This Firestone is definitely not leaving my bag, especially if I go on an adventure where I have to cross rivers. Something I didn't take with me when leaving home but ended up buying is a thermos. Crossing Patagonia in winter was no joke, and having something warm to drink definitely made the trip a bit smoother. And the good part is that you can also use it to keep your water cold when traveling in warm countries. Also, always have a piece of rope with you. It saved my food from being eaten by the mice when I was camping in Patagonia and also allows me to hang my clothes after washing them. And of course, you should always have a reusable water bottle to limit your plastic consumption. You can drink tap water in many countries, more than you think. I also have a sponge and trust me, you won't regret having that one when it's time to do the dishes. I completely forgot to tell you, but I also have this little brush here to wash my clothes and trust me, it will make your life much easier when you have to hand wash your clothes. Now that we've covered what your house and kitchen are gonna look like when you're on the road, let me introduce you to my essential electronics. I've had a solar charger in my backpack for many years. I started with this one from Rough Power that was pretty incredible because it only charged my device with the sun, meaning no external battery was attached to it. But I recently got something way smaller that does the job also pretty well. It's a solar powered external battery that can be charged from an electrical outlet but also with the sun. That way I know I can always have my phone and camera charged when I'm camping. 
a headlamp is a no-brainer if you're planning to camp. I've had this one from a brand called Keshua that I bought from a Decathlon store that I've had for many years. And so far, it's the best one that I've found in the market because of its price, its small size, and that it's also USB rechargeable. And what I really like about this one is that you can attach it from pretty much everywhere thanks to its little clip here. I also had a tiny solar lamp that I unfortunately lost but that was so useful because you can simply charge it with the sun during the day and at night it will give you light for a couple of hours which will make you save a lot a lot of energy and battery from your headlamp. This item here could have been part of the kitchen category but since it's an electronic device I have decided to mention it here. Being able to access clean water is not the case in every country. Unless you want to buy tons of plastic bottles, which I don't, I recommend having a UV water purifier or a water filter. And if you can have both, even better. Tape is another thing I've been carrying around with me for many years and it can save you in a lot of situations. The day my lamp broke in a hostel or the day a mouse ate a piece of my tent, it was easy to fix it thanks to it. A very easy way to carry it around is to run it up around an old credit card or even a pen. I also always have a sewing kit in my bag because I almost never buy clothes. I try fixing it as much as I can before changing it, so it's important to have the tools to fix them whenever needed. Also, if you're like me and like trekking on your own, then I really recommend having a whistle with you. You never know what might happen and to be honest, I've had to use this. I also want to say that I paid for everything myself, nothing was sponsored. All the links of the items I've just mentioned are in the description box down below and some of them are affiliate links. That way it can help me just a little bit to compensate for the time I've spent creating those videos. But if that bothers you for any reason, then it's totally fine. You can just look up the items on Google. Now, don't forget to click the notification bell here because in the next video, I'm gonna tell you all about my video gear, how I managed to fit everything into my 55 liters backpack, and what I recommend having if you wanna start travel vlogs but still want to travel light. You can also check out this video here if you want to know how I've been able to travel full-time since 2015 and this video here if you want to know how to organize your first backpacking trip. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if this video was useful and to give it a like if you enjoyed it. Bye guys! Thanks for watching!